Well, hello, welcome to I Love Gate today. And we're in Chicago today, and we're here with Greg Baird. How are you, Greg? Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. It's so good to connect with you here. We've uh, we've been connected on LinkedIn for a while, yep. and uh, and all that time, as I've come to to know you and your your business public persona, you've been really out there as far as kind of as a public speaker and uh, and really kind of helping educate and spread the word about LGBTQ rights. And I have all that. I've been doing that for a total of 28 years, but uh, full time since 2003 when I moved to Chicago. I previously lived in Northern Michigan and worked at a college in higher ed. Okay. So um, wow. yeah, made a big change. <laughs> that is huge. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting though, because you're out there and you're, you're really putting yourself out there and, and you're uh, in some of the messaging you put out, but how did you get started with all that? I started in college and it was on a fluke. Uh, actually, I was never going to come out like a lot of college students. I came from a small town in Michigan. So I went to a university in the middle of Michigan called Central Michigan University. Yeah. And they had a, uh, it was just known as the uh, Gay Straight Alliance. No, it was, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I have to remember this. It was, it had the word gay and it. it was like a gay club, gay, uh, gay uh, lesbian for student support, I think it was called. Yeah. And not so inclusive as it is now with the terms. Uh, and I thought there was no way I'm going to go. And uh, I just didn't want to be discovered. Didn't want anybody to know who I was. Well, I went and lo and behold, two weeks later, I'm like the social director. Yeah. So go figure that one out. And, <laughs> um, and then about a year into it, uh, I ended up having a boyfriend that had moved in with me in school and we were the token gay couple to go to like the residence halls and speak. And I thought, well, I kind of like this gig. This is kind of fun. And it was nice to, uh, to motivate people. And then, uh, you know, you're just sharing your coming out story, which was uh, very unique. So yeah. I stuck with that and I got my degree in secondary ed in speech and theater and English and uh, always thought I was going to be a theater teacher. Yeah. And I, I did that a little bit uh, off and on. And then I, I just felt like there was a calling to do what I did. So when I worked in higher ed, I was director of a lecture series. And that's what really um, kicked in for me. And I, I got some good resources, some good motivation, met some really unique people, some well-known people, and uh, started doing that part time. And I thought, wow, People are really listening to my story. Yeah. Now, mind you, that has changed over the years because I know um, everybody wanted to hear your coming out story, you know, 20 years ago. Well, they still do now, but not as much. It's more about being an ally, your community, inclusion, um, a lot of pronoun use, things like that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it evolved over time, and especially when it comes to public speaking, because a lot of people are afraid of public speaking. But I can uh, I can attest to the fact that I thought it was I thought it was insurmountable once upon a time, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but it's just one of those things that over time you can kind of, uh, you know, it's pushing your own boundaries and 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 learning and kind of get you know, feedback from the audience and so forth. But I'm it's sounding and I'm guessing that it, you went through a very similar journey in that sense. I did. And, you know, the, the journey was very interesting because I, uh, as topics and different things unfold across our world and across our country, that had to evolve and change too. And also the fact that, you know, I evolved and changed with a lot of the uh, topic matter and things. And, you know, certain things happened um, that had great effect on me. The murder of Matthew Shepard, the uh, Pulse nightclub shooting, uh, both things that, I was there not too far after those incidents happened, and I ended up doing a documentary on both of them uh, that I've used in my lecture program. So it had some really profound effect. I do some work um, off and on with the Matthew Shepard Foundation, more so I connect with Judy Shepard yeah. often, and um, I, I collaborated with a lot of different things. So I've been very fortunate, but you know, you kind of find your road and maybe the road less traveled and you take those kind of different branches off of it and it proves to be um finding your legacy and and being a great mentor to young people but also to a lot of corporations and companies so that has evolved and changed and been a wonderful uh thing for me i love that uh, and uh, and as you were growing, I mean, right right before the pandemic hit, uh, you had a big one. You were in Ontario, California, and you 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 spoke at a at a conference there. 
Yeah, I was at a World Peace Conference in Ontario, California that was um, hosted by Rotary International. Yeah. And uh, I was among some really unique people talking about, you know, environmental things and global warming to, uh, you know, other issues that involve the human race. And I was there as part of that. So I felt really fortunate that I could be out there and um, talk to a group of people that may have not heard my message and were very accepting of that. Because I think, you know, back in the day, Rotary was kind of the good boys club. Uh, <laughs> my, my father, my grandfather were part of that. But that's, uh, it changed a lot. And a lot of people made comments that they were very happy to see me there as part of that, you know, transition moving forward. Yeah. But with pandemic hits, how did you adapt and, you know, kind of pivot on something? <laughs> you have a well, smile on your face. <laughs> I, oh, well, yeah, I, I'm smiling on the outside. Uh, I, I came back from Ontario, California, at the end of January of 2020. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit and like the bottom fell out. I literally lost my entire lecture series, which I was only doing a few corporate and company gigs, but I was doing more uh, college university and appearances. Yeah. And I thought, oh, no, what am I going to do? So I knew things were going to go virtual. I saw a lot of people going towards that. So instead of uh, crying in my tissues, I yeah. revamped everything and presented everything online on Zoom or Google Meets, I think it's called. Yeah. So I did a lot of that and did a big changeover. And I would still be able to reach out even when a lot of students were having um, that Zoom fatigue yeah. kind of thing. I I'm a good storyteller and I could reel people in and inspire them. And I wondered how that was going to work because when I do speak, I, I work the stage. I just don't stand behind a podium. Yeah. I have good graphics and good media and PowerPoint. So um, again, it's been more um, digitized, you know, with the uh, with Zoom calls and things like that. So now I've done a few here and there. I was out in Palm Springs, did a couple of things. Yeah. Um, so I'm still more so doing virtual um, things because I think schools and universities don't know really and with this, again with this whole new variant and everything going on but um, a lot of corporations and companies have reached out so yeah. I was able to add a global speaker now to uh, my national status so that was really rewarding so you know it was onward and upward with that and, and that's still going on as far as now moving into the new year. Yeah. Well, during the pandemic, when all of a sudden we had all this time on our hands and nothing to do for a little bit, uh, I, I took up one of my old hobbies of gardening and started doing that. But uh, you took one of your your hobbies and uh, <laughs> you turned it into an actual business. You just you just can't let you just got to keep moving onward and forward. I know. Well, I, I was like, OK, you know, I want to still exercise. I wasn't going to the gym. So I started doing this big walking mission. So I'm doing about 150 miles plus per month walking but also i had this small seasoning business called gregor seasoning you can find it online yeah. and i had three seasonings at the time and i was just selling them on facebook i didn't have a website nothing and i started selling a lot of them well then my spice purveyor said well you know you're selling a lot of your seasoning because of the fact that everybody's home cooking so i added a website and i added some more um seasoning lines you know i was testing a lot of different things yeah. and i said oh, i'm only going to do four or five now well now i'm at seven and <laughs> seven's been the magic number for uh maybe a, a couple of years now and i'm doing really well with it yeah. and it's fun i enjoy making it i use the seasoning myself they're all um very versatile in their usage and everything so uh, I even have a coffee shop up in Northern Michigan that's selling my coffee creamer because they were using it, um, yeah. you know, for their coffee when people come and got their coffee. So yeah. it's been fun. It's been something different on the side. Well, I, I'm I'm a I'm a perfect candidate for all that. I am one of those that I've got an entire cupboard full of all these mixtures of I go to Trader Joe's and I just can't help myself. Oh, so. yes. So yeah. I am going to, uh, I loved what I saw on your site. So I am going to pick some, especially for the holidays here. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So no, it's just really, I'm really glad you were able to take a few moments of your time and share a bit of your story with our audience here. And uh, especially right before the holidays when everything starts changing gears here really soon. Oh yeah, thing, things are changing. Although in Chicago, not much, the weather hasn't changed that much. It's like uh, <laughs> 50 some degrees here today. 
Yeah, but don't uh, worry. Tomorrow it'll probably be zero. It, it will it'll probably be twenty below or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here, and uh, look forward to connecting again soon. Very welcome. Thanks for the opportunity, Matt. Take care. Now. Bye. So good. Coming back.